limit the number of trips taken back and forth. The more times you go back and forth, the better chance you have of being discovered. So he's really trying to take as few trips as he can. Now in order to do that, he's got to load these small boats pretty heavy. And in some cases, the water line was just inches below the top of the boats, barely submerged, you know what I mean? So he tries to take as few trips as he can, and so he's really loading these boats down. That would be difficult because you don't want them to sink. And the small boats were loaded very heavily. In some cases, the water line was just inches below the top of the boats. Now, what's going to be the most challenging part of this evacuation? Are they going to stick those horses in the water and let them swim across and make all kinds of noise? They're going to put them in the boats. And they're not used to being in boats, I'm assuming. And it's a miracle to me. The task of transport, transporting these horses is going to be incredibly challenged. They're not used to being small boats moved. And for nine hours, Colonel Glover and his men sail back and forth and back and forth across the East River, loading colonial soldiers, loading colonial horses, loading colonial supplies and weapons. Nine hours of back and forth, while George Washington and a few men are tending to campfires and rolling barrels back and forth. They estimate that some of Glover's boats made as many as 11 separate crossings. 11 times they went back and forth. Not all, but some. 11 times. Now, as they continue their evacuation, who's in harm's way? George Washington and the approximately 1,000 troops that he keeps with him to make the British feel like they're still in camp. He's still got to be evacuated. Well, with that concern in mind, Mother Nature provides a third miracle as a very dense fog rolls in and you combine that with the overcast and they stated that you couldn't see 20 feet in front of your face because of the fog and the overcast. So at this point, Mother Nature provides a third miracle as a very dense fog rolls in and this act of Mother Nature makes it hard for anyone to see more than 20 feet in front of them. And so Washington and his men try to sneak by these British sentries. You know what British sentries are, right? They're like guys on guard, standing on guard, okay? So they try, but they finally spot Washington and they begin to fire upon he and his men. As they're escaping back to the East River, they're spotted. And they're fired upon by these British sentries. Well, four of Washington's men are hit, but the rest of his Continental Army escape across the East River. All 8,000 men, minus the four that were hit during the time the centuries got hold of them. Well, in this whole time, they don't have any idea they've evacuated. So, at dawn on August 30th, 1776, General Sir William Howe sends out a patrol to locate the Continental Army because they're going to have their attack once they locate them, they're going to attack them and end this thing. And those patrol, British patrol, report back to Howe that Washington and his troops had vanished in the morning fog. They are gone. They are gone. So we have good news and bad news. Washington withdrawing the Continental Army from Long Island to Manhattan and eventually camping at White Plains, New York means that they will survive another day to fight, right? So the good news is, is Washington gets to Manhattan Island, he then withdraws the Continental Army from Manhattan Island northward and they camp at White Plains, New York. That's the good news, that they got to Manhattan, he marches them northward and they camp at White Plains, New York. What's the bad news? The whole reason they were there was to do what? Keep the tradition. Taking New York Harbor. Unfortunately, the bad news is the withdrawal on the part of the Continental Army left the British in command of New York City and its splendid harbor. So, we are not doing well in the early stages here, kiddos. Not doing well at all. Now, that'll take us to our next subtopic.
which, be the, which will be the British advance from Quebec. Well, the word is that George Washington is camping where? White Plains, New York. So in the fall of 1776, the British Navy is going to advance southward from Quebec through Lake Champlain to White Plains, New York. Now if you look at the map up here, here's Quebec. And they're going to come down Lake Champlain here, and they're going to get to White Plains, New York. And what are they going to do? Destroy the Continental Army again. So in the fall of 1776, the British Navy, their plan is to advance southward from Quebec, Canada, through Lake Champlain toward White Plains, New York. And their goal is to advance to White Plains where General Washington and the Continental Army were camped and attack. And they again feel if they can defeat Washington at White Plains, what's happened? It's over. War's over. So that's the British strategy. After they run them out of New York, they find out that they're at White Plains, New York, camping. They send a British Navy from Quebec, Canada, south southward toward Lake Champlain, and they're going to attack Washington at White Plains, New York, and end the war forever. Now, there's only one thing that stands in the British Navy's way, and that was Benedict Arnold, who was stationed at Fort Ticonderoga, which we talked about, on Lake Champlain. So the only thing stopping the British from marching, or not marching, sailing straight southward to White Plains, New York, and attacking General Washington and the Continental Army is a little fort called Fort Ticonderoga, which is under the command of Benedict Arnold. Most of you remember Benedict Arnold possibly for his traitorism, so to speak. Well, he's not a traitor at this point. And he's going to save the day here for the Americans. Can you his name Benedict Arnold? Yes. Sir. Remember, Benedict Arnold was part of the Green Mountain Boys, wasn't he? That secured this fort in the first place, that and Fort Crown Point. Well, he was stationed at Fort Ticonderoga, and now he's the only thing in the way of the British Navy. Well, what he wants to do is he wants to plan a naval blockade of Fort Ticonderoga and Lake Champlain to keep the British from, re from reaching White Plains. So it's the strategy of Benedict Arnold to plan a naval blockade of both Fort Ticonderoga and Lake Champlain to keep the British from re reaching uh, White Plains and Washington. What would you need to have a naval blockade? A navy? You would need ships, right? He has none. He has no ships at his disposal. So his strategy is a little bit tough to imagine. <coughs> He's going to plan a naval blockade of Fort Ticonderoga and Lake Champlain to keep the British from reaching White, reaching White Plains, but he has no ships. So. You got to remember this takes time for him to come from Quebec down and so he enlists the help of 800 volunteers and they build from scratch 15 ships in three months and they build 15 ships in three months as the British are coming southward. So Arnold is planning a naval blockade of Fort Ticonderoga and Lake Champlain to keep the British from reaching White Plains however he has no ships at his disposal so he enlists the help of 800 volunteers and builds 15 ships in three months. Okay, now Arnold's goal is not to defeat the British Navy, it's to stall them out. To stall them out for what? What's he going to try to stall? Now that's what most people are thinking, that's a great guess. But what time of the year is this? Oh. Yeah, during the until winter. That's right. British has a long-standing rule that they do not fight in the winter months. So all he's trying to do is stall them out to get them to winter so they will not go down to White Plains because Washington is not moving from there. 
So Arnold's goal is not to win the upcoming battle with the British, but simply to string out the fight to buy some time, because at this time the European military tradition was that all fighting during the winter months would cease. And Arnold's naval blockade was set up to keep the British Navy from advancing towards Washington's troops before winter set in. Now this is kind of weird, and this is probably a bad map, but his idea is there's an island in Lake Champlain, and it's called Valcour Island, which is on your ID sheet. And what he does is he sails these 15 ships behind Valcour Island and kind of hides, waiting to ambush these British ships that are coming down Lake Champlain. They have no idea that he's built 15 ships. They have no idea they're going to be meeting that kind of resistance, right? So he sails these ships behind Valcour Island, waiting for the British to come where he plans on ambushing them. So Arnold's strategy began as he sailed the 15 ships behind Valcour Island and Lake Champlain. And there the ships would wait in ambush for the British ships. Well, on October 11th of 1776, at 12 noon, the British ships arrive. On October 11th of 1776, at 12 noon, the British ships arrive. And the battle began in the morning at 12, or at 12 noon and lasted until dusk. Went from 12 noon to dusk or dark. The battle lasted from noon to dusk. By the end of the day, Arnold had lost 30% of his men and all 15 of his ships. He had lost 30% of his men and all 15 ships. Well, the British was attacked, was planning an attack the next morning, and how were Arnold and his men set up? <laughs> Pretty good. They got no ships, right? So what they did is they slipped by the British boats in the darkness of night and avoided capture. But it did stall the British Navy into winter. And so after this battle at Valcour Island, the British withdrew back to Quebec, another tactical error, instead of advancing to Washington and the American troops at White Plains. They should have kept going. But they fought this battle, not expect any resistance. They had a battle, they obviously took damage as well, and made the choice to go ahead and turn around and go back to Quebec, rather than advance to White Plains where Washington was stationed. That was a huge tactical error. So, what did Benedict Arnold do? He brought his countrymen another season to fight, and hopefully win the battle for independence. Been a bad opening series, right? Now they need to regroup during the winter and get ready to get back in the fight. They're probably going to, it's like a football team that gets beat in football. They're going to take the next week of practice to get better and figure out what in the world we did wrong and how we're going to be a better team and win the next game. Washington's got to do the same thing. Benedict Arnold gives him the opportunity to regroup through the winter and come back strong in the spring to try to win this battle for independence. If we don't have people like John Glover, and we don't have people like Benedict Arnold, at this point we, are, we have lost the Revolutionary War and the whole course of history has changed. Okay, I'm going to show you a short video on Benedict Arnold and this Lake Champlain blockade so you can kind of get an idea what it looked like and then we'll be done for the day. I don't understand how it held them back to winter when it was only like oh, October. Well, they didn't expect any, it's a good question, they, they didn't expect any there. resistance, and they lost, How did they lose? I'm not sure, but enough to turn them around, you know what I mean? Yeah. They probably thought 